going nowhere at Dover. A critical incident is declared. Staffing shortages at border control are to blame. So what will it mean for your summer plans? Also tonight. The Evening News with Lucrezia Millerini. Good evening. There was a miserable start to the summer holidays for tens of thousands of passengers travelling through the port of Dover today. Many were stuck in traffic jams for five or six hours because of major delays at border control on the UK side. A critical incident was declared and tonight there are still long waits to get on the cross-channel ferries. Well, the port of Dover pointed the blame at French authorities for not providing enough border staff. It said it spent months planning for the summer a surge in travellers. My TV News understands French authorities accept they should have provided more staff and are sending more to clear the backlog. From Dover, Chloe Keady reports on the getaways going nowhere. Well, there was better news today, though, for travellers who have chosen to fly abroad this summer. Planned strike action by hundreds of British Airways workers have been called off after a new pay deal was accepted. Villain Marks is at Heathrow Airport tonight. And Villain, does this mean BA passengers can travel with confidence this summer? Well, not such good news for rail passengers, though. 40,000. Next tonight, millions of tonnes of desperately needed Ukrainian grain can finally be exported after a deal brokered by the, was brokered by the UN and Turkey. The grain and other agricultural products have been stuck in Black Sea ports following Russia's invasion. Well, the deal will see ships given safe passage from three Ukrainian ports. The UN Secretary General called it a beacon of hope. Here's our global security editor, Rohit Katru. A mother and her partner have been convicted of murdering her 15-year-old son by torturing him over several months. 15-year-old Sebastian Kalinowski endured horrific beatings from his stepfather, who was a bodybuilder who did martial arts. Well, Sebastian's mother also encouraged and took part in the abuse at their home in Huddersfield. Well, Katie Oscroft is there for us tonight. Katie, there was some really shocking detail about what Sebastian had to endure before his death. A former Irish soldier has been given a 15-month prison sentence for being a member of the so-called Islamic State terror group. Lisa. COVID cases are continuing to surge across the UK. The latest estimates say cases have jumped again in the past week, up by 250,000. It's being fuelled by fast-spreading variants of Omicron. Thankfully, it doesn't appear to be increasing the number of patients needing hospital treatment. But, as our deputy political editor, Anushka Astana, reports, some are taking extra precautions. There is plenty more still to come on the ITV evening news, including there are just a few more days until the Commonwealth Games begin. We'll have all of that and much more after the break. Welcome back. Former US President Donald Trump watched the attempted insurrection at Capitol Hill on TV and ignored his aides and family who begged him to stop it. That's the latest claim in the congressional inquiry into the riot. But it accuses Mr Trump of choosing not to act and of failing to make a single call to police or security staff. The panel is building a case that the former president acted illegally to try and overturn his defeat to Joe Biden. From Washington, our correspondent Rachel Younger reports. Well, here Prince Harry has won a partial victory in his court battle with the Home Office over security arrangements when he's in the UK. The Duke of Sussex is taking legal action over a decision to not allow him to pay for police protection. Well, Lizzie Robinson, some other news, and the co-op group is to axe around 400 jobs. The retail... Well, Dean Asher-Smith will be one of the stars of the Commonwealth Games, which begin in Birmingham in less than a week. Athletes from 72 countries are taking part and no one wants to miss out. Well, triple Olympic champion and world record holder Adam Peaty has just declared himself fit. He broke his foot during training and he told Amy Lewis he can't wait to race in front of a home crowd. And we will, of course, be following all the action at the Games. Now it's almost seven. Here's what's coming up before Emmerdale. 
Ah, well, there's up-to-date information on the travel situation on our website and guides on how you can claim compensation. That's at itv.com slash news. Well, let's get an update on what is making the news tonight. Next tonight, the pensioner who killed his terminally ill wife has told ITV News he did nothing wrong and it's a law that needs to change. Graham Mansfield was convicted of manslaughter yesterday and given a two-year suspended sentence. He and his wife agreed to end their lives together, but he survived. Well, the judge said it was a tragic case, but not everyone agrees he did the right thing, as Rebecca Barry reports. The scheme which helps prisoners kick drugs for good is being extended by the government. The drug-free units are sealed off from the rest of the prison and give the inmates extra support. Well, Justice Secretary Dominic Raab told ITV News it would also stop the heroin substitute methadone being prescribed too freely. Our political correspondent Carl Dinn was given access to one unit at HMP Oakwood in Wolverhampton. The Crown star Claire Foy has been granted a stalking protection order against a man who sent her thousands of emails and on one occasion knocked on her door. The 38-year-old actor is said to have been deeply frightened by what happened. Rishi Davda is at Highbury Corner at Magistrates Court. The judge in Puerto Rico has lifted a restraining order taken out against the singer Ricky Martin after he was accused of harassment. The judge issued the order after a 21-year-old relative filed a demand. Next tonight, how the project to save the mountain gorillas of Rwanda has proved so successful, more space is needed to house them. Well, the gorillas were once close to extinction, but now they've bounced back and land once taken from their habitat by humans is now being returned, as Chris Ship reports from Rwanda. ...encounter with those extraordinary creatures. Refugees in Poland and the drought in Spain in the next edition of On Assignment. That's at 10.45 on Tuesday evening. And on the subject of what's going on in the world, how many capitals and currencies could you name off the top of your head? Well, join me and Becky for that after this short break. Hello again, welcome back. Well, we've reached the end of a record-breaking week of weather, which in some parts of the country has well and truly left its mark. It's been the main topic of conversation for many of us all week, and Becky is here. So, finally tonight, did you know there are 195 countries in the world? Perhaps you do. But could you name all their capitals and which currencies they use? Even if you could, you wouldn't be eight-year-old Anne Winston from Cardiff who recited them all in just seven minutes and 15 seconds. It set a new world record, so you can probably guess who won when Anne put our Wales reporter, Rhys Williams, to the test. Oh, I think Rhys made the right decision there. Um, that is it from us for now. Tom will be here with news at 10. But from me and the rest of the evening news team, bye-bye and have a great weekend.